we are deep in the Karurangi National Park today to explore some beautiful hidden gems in this remote national park, which is the second largest national park in New Zealand, up in the northwest corner of the South Island, this rugged west coast area just outside of Karamea is the stuff that dreams are made of if you're looking for caves, remote, lush, dense forests, and some rarely trafficked, wonderful, beautiful hidden gems. This area is known in particular for several caves. Some you need to pay for a guided trip, others you can do self-guided tours. So we're gonna be diving into some excellent caves. They also have a lot of unique geological features like arches and tunnels, due mainly to the, the limestone component of this area. One other feature of this area is that this national park features some of the densest native bush in all of New Zealand. about to enter the crazy paving cave here and the interesting thing about the caves in this area is they are home to the New Zealand cave spider it's only found in this area this and Golden Bay which is a little further north of here but it's a unique species only found in New Zealand caves that's where this gets the name crazy paving cave because you have these old this old dry mud formations look like pavers and the thing about these spiders is their egg sacs are much larger compared to other spiders So right next door is the Box Canyon Cave. It's the left fork of the entrances here. And this is a much larger open space. And I gotta say, just the, the entrance here is absolutely breathtaking. But then when you walk in on these steps, wow. So there's this squeeze right here looks pretty tempting I don't know how far back it goes but it's not the tightest squeeze I've been in but it looks super curvy and windy interested to see where that takes us whoa oh giant egg sack giant spider egg sack right above me where? right there oh my god wow oh look at that we could stem up to there. No, you don't want to stem up to there? This is a little, oh. Oh. Sorry. This is okay? a little crazy. Yeah. How are you doing? Fine. Okay. I mean, uh, I'm not going to get stuck, right? Nah. See, here's the chamber. Look at this. Wow. Really opens up. Wow. Ooh. I've said this before, but the, one of the good things about the caving in New Zealand is the bats that they have here in New Zealand, they don't live in the caves. So you don't have to deal with that overwhelming bat guano smell that you might encounter in, in other areas of the world. Think you can fit in there? Has Jesse had too many donuts? Huh. Will he fit? Don't, don't, don't. I don't think I should go any further. Okay, don't get stuck. Oh, I don't think I should go any further. I probably, if I could crawl on my belly, I would do it, but it's real muddy. Uh, <laughs> real 
little muddy back there. Is it too muddy? Whoa. Sure does. Oh wow, look at that. <laughs> wow. Yeah, don't. Oh, that's that's tough with all that mud right there, huh? So you can see how these these rocks over time just kind of churned as water has been in the area and churned and kind of act like erosion granules for this this area. The water just kicks this stuff up and it's like sandblasting the cavern, but it's more like boulder blasting it by spinning these boulders around and around and they eventually they bore out areas like this. Wow, Box Canyon Cave. That is an awesome cave. Good beginner cave because it's got that large opening, but then also some nice little tight side passages you could squeeze in and, and get a little taste of squeezing through those narrow limestone passageways. Pretty sweet. But we're just getting started here in Kahurangi. Oh boy, so much more in store. I'm excited. So up next, we're gonna go check out the Operara Arch, which is supposedly one of, if not the biggest, one of the biggest limestone arches in all of Australasia. It's supposed to be a nice kind of lush little canyon or valley around the arches and beautiful vegetation. And I'm sure we're gonna see plenty of wildlife and birds because we've already seen so many different varieties. So the waters here have a distinct brownish color and it's not because they're polluted or anything like that. It's just from the tannins and a lot of the vegetation leached down into the water. And you can actually see when the sun hits it just right, the waters are very clear. You can see the rocks at the bottom of the riverbed. Just the tannins give it that tea-like color. And in fact, I've heard someone refer to it as mother nature's tea. And given the remote nature of this area, I mean, there's really only one dirt road in and out of this park, at least this section of the park. And it's about an hour and a half outside the town of Karamea. So even a lot of native Kiwis, from what I understand, have this at the top of their bucket list because it's so remote and hard to get to that it's, it doesn't see a lot of traffic. And Apparently, it's supposedly crowded right now, but we've only seen maybe five or six cars in this area. So that, that just tells you how remote and how few visitors this area gets if, if six cars is a busy day. With the amount of birds that you can hear, you can tell like it's dense forest area. There's so many more birds in this particular area than I've heard in any other part of New Zealand.
Okay, up next we're gonna check out the Moria Gate Arch, which in order to get to, you walk through some lovely old growth rainforest here, and then you can loop over to something called Mirror Tarn. So still, plenty more beautiful stuff to see here. We have just begun to scratch the surface from everything that's available here. Gonna be up here for several more days, so at least a few more videos coming from this part of New Zealand. But I am already blown away. Dense vegetation, rainforests, the uh, caves, arches. This place is absolutely tremendous. Plenty more coming, so stay tuned. In the meantime, get out there, find your adventure and be infamous. Infamous.